Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about creating family resolutions. Join us as we share ways we hope to have deeper connections with the people that matter most to us. Let's get started. Today we're talking about creating family resolutions. This wording is a take on New Year's resolutions, but these kind of resolutions can be made anytime. And we're basing this discussion on a real simple magazine article called Relationship Reset to have deeper connections with the people that matter most to you. So Julie and Mindy, what did you think when I sent you an article called Relationship Reset? Well, I like the sound of it. Um, (laughs) It sounds like a good resolution. Um, Anything that's intended to like foster closer relationships, who doesn't want that? Mm -hmm. But it also sounds a little tricky because it doesn't just involve you. Like most New Year's resolutions are all about what you can do. So this involves working with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I certainly love the idea of hitting a button. You think reset. Okay. Everything goes Mm -hmm. back to, you know, some point that, um, that you want it to be at and, um, takes people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like that because aren't relationships ongoing. I mean, the people that you're closest to, you're going to have ups and downs. And so Mm -hmm. I, I like this kind of ongoing conversation of having better relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if they're not bad, things go Mm -hmm. stale sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like how sometimes we just need, and maybe we should, maybe we don't even need a total reset. Maybe we need relationship Mm -hmm. refresh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this article talks about the idea of a family resolution and our annual attempts at self-improvement often end in failure, but a family resolution, a pledge to strengthen your bonds with your nearest and dearest is something else entirely. And we think that you can succeed at it. Not like the New Year's resolution that we tend to be done with it by January 10th. <laughs> right. But hopefully this is something that has some long lasting benefits. And children and adults alike derive an ease of belonging from close relationships. And we might have trouble getting our whole family to sign on, but the good news is that we don't necessarily need to. There are some things that we can do ourselves, some things that we can do on our part, and hopefully that will help the reconnection process, and then maybe we'll see them respond. Mindy, you're Mm -hmm. nodding your head. Was that something that spoke to you? Well, that was why I liked the article because it sounds really lofty and it makes me think of the chore chart that I'll never accomplish or, you know, that, well, yeah, in a perfect world, I'd love for my family to be, you know, sitting around the dinner table every night, having lovely conversation with each other, being really nice and kind and encouraging and, you know, yeah, don't we all want that? But then the article said it it really is just a pledge to strengthen Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, keeping it real. And then another thing I wrote down that I like is you don't have to get everyone's buy-in. And you alluded to that. And she says, you know, you can actually commit to unilateral acts. Um, it doesn't have to be everyone to try to get the strengthening, you know, that we're going for. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that that's was, key because I mm-hmm. tend to want to do things, do things knowing I'm going to get a good response. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like that matters, <laughs> but right. maybe it, maybe it doesn't, you know, right. you just, you just be the best <laughs> relationship, you know, to be the best in the relationship that you can be and then see what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about some typical ways that we already try to connect with our family members. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you guys find that your family gravitates towards when you want to do things together? Well, it's changed throughout the years, but kind of where we are now, we just have the boys here in Nashville and with John being sick, we really don't get to do much, but they're always up for um, coming over. And if John's up for it, we have a game night. Okay. Um, Low key game. Uh huh. (laughs) Nothing too, too intense, but that's something we've been doing a lot of lately, like just getting pizza and playing cards or playing sparkle or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And then if it needs to even be more low key dinner and a movie. Okay. Uh, Yeah. yeah. I'll say we're coming off of summer here and um, there's been a lot of connecting over TV movies (laughs) more Uh than, Mm -hmm. you know, what usually happens like through the school year. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
also, if we can somehow manage to have a meal together, you know, that we always connect over food. Yeah. So, um, and in that sense, three of my sons are working at Chick-fil-A and now they're actually all working at the same Chick-fil-A. So anytime any one or two are working together or even three, Mm -hmm. we go like Bryce and I are like, well, let's go to Chick-fil-A. Even if we're not really eating much, like we'll get a drink and we'll just sit there. So Mm -hmm. that's a, that's a way we've tried to like make it work for us, you know, if they're not home at dinner. And Mm then the other thing out, all of my family likes to be active. Um, we like to work out. And so one of my favorite things over the summer is just one or two of my sons coming to the gym with me at the same time. We don't do anything together at the gym. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you just walk in together? (laughs) Yeah, we walk. Yeah. We, yeah. If we can line it up just right, we'll ride together and we'll leave together. Okay. And so that was actually really sweet over the summer. And it's just like, you take the, the opportunities that you can get mm-hmm. because, you know, with adulting children, mm-hmm. you never know. <laughs> right. That's funny. Cause I think it would be fun to work out together, but I thought, you know, I can see why my 24 year old son doesn't want to go to the gym with his 57 year old mother. Uh. <laughs> But I will say he took me rock climbing a couple weeks ago and he even posted about it. I was so he excited did. that he was, that he wasn't embarrassed. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Julie, I saw that cause I, I follow David and I just thought that was so cool that you guys did that together. Yeah. And that he posted was, a picture of you. It was really fun. I mean, that's major maturity there on it his is. part. Cause I don't think my boys would post a picture. <laughs> There's some confidence in there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm pretty similar to you guys. You know, we like to watch certain shows together. We might go to the movies. We might go for a walk. We like to, you know, eat together. But it does feel like we can fall into a bit of a routine that some of these things can grow a little stale or people aren't as excited about them anymore. Have you guys noticed that anything that you had been doing for a while, you were kind of like, eh, people don't really find this to be as fun anymore. Or maybe you didn't find it to be as fun anymore. Well, I'm laughing because I'm like, after we've watched a movie together, nobody wants to get off the couch, but we're tired of watching the movie. So then everybody just gets on their phone. (laughs) (laughs) And we're like done interacting, but you know, you know, right. Do we, we don't want to watch another movie, but we're kind of too lazy to get up and do anything. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And sometimes if it's Chick-fil-A too much, they're like, Oh, I'm tired. You know, I can't have Chick-fil-A again. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking about the movies. This article suggested that you, or shows, like you pause during the commercials and talk about it or, you know, have like bonding moments. Okay, nobody in my family wants to have a deep conversation in the middle of a movie or a life lesson for mom on a commercial. Like, no, mm-hmm. that I don't know who, <laughs> did this person even have kids? Because it's after a certain age, your kids will just flat out tell you, stop. Yeah, no. <laughs> I just want to watch the movie. I do have a fun family memory about this though. Oh, Marie. you do? Okay. Um, yes, yes. Cause you know, like when we were kids, you couldn't pause live TV shocker. If you guys didn't know that, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you couldn't pause live TV and you had commercials that you had to deal with. Mm. And so my dad was in the army. He was very physically active and, um, he could not sit still through the commercial breaks. So we would do push-ups and sit-ups okay. like, like not like, he's not like drill sergeant. But we just would naturally, we knew like, oh, we have to do push-ups and sit-ups during the commercials. I mean, that's a creative so, way. Listen, yeah. I remember doing 400 sit-ups. Oh, like, in a commercial? Oh it was just, yes, you guys. <laughs> um, We were in shape. All right. All right. <gasps> no, and a little competitive. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah. Well, have you, have you carried that on with your own kids, Mindy? I mean, I've told them about it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just told you we're too lazy to get up off the couch by the time we're done. (laughs) I guess anything done too often can become stale. And I do think that um, you have to mix it up. It can't always be the same thing. You have to let some time go by. I think that when we kind of fall into a rut is like when we can't even think of anything new that we could do together. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a part of me loves the thought of 
Friday night is pizza night. Like I just love that idea, mm-hmm, like a mm-hmm, tradition. Mm-hmm. But then when it when I try to implement it, I get tired of pizza every Friday night. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. no, we need to mm-hmm. do something different. So uh, we've been doing a lot of pizza lately, and. Mm-hmm. I've noticed the kids are like, oh, we just had pizza, you know, because that's something they probably eat a lot of anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm having to kind of change it up. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, what are some connection points that you guys would like to try with your family? And now that we've established that some of our ideas can get a little bit stale and listeners are probably <laughs> thinking, yeah, I mean, give me some new ideas. Is there anything mm-hmm. that you guys have been wanting to try or that you have tried in the past? Well, one thing, and this is probably something that every family already does and did way before we did, (laughs) because I'm usually late to the game, but I just felt like we weren't staying connected enough when we weren't seeing each other. So we, you know, I said, can we start a family chat? We named it. We have a little symbol, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we even had some bylaws written up and (laughs) I love um, it. And that has been really good. Now, I feel like it's probably been going for about a year and now people have dropped off, you know, like they're not, they're not using it as much. So I, that's Mm. where I can probably make a unilateral decision and say, I'm going to comment every day, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, we, we did uh, to get the kids to buy in. We had to come up with some rules and one of them was that we will not share any articles. (laughs) Because Ooh. someone, not to say who, John, was always like <laughs> sending articles for them to read. And they were like, we're not reading those, Dad. Like, this is not mm. like, I don't want to sit here and read these articles. Mm. And mm-hmm. no, no politics is what we said. And then one was only one cat video per day. That's per person. <gasps> <That's laughs> and, you know, fabulous. and they said like, hey, we all joked about like who would be the most likely to break what rule and when. And um they thought I might break the cat video rule, but sometimes they're like, it's okay, mom. Like we allow it. So if it's that's really good. Kind of you a... can send too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to see that continue and actually get ramped back up again, because mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like when they're busy, like one is so far away, I just mm-hmm. don't even see her. And then the other two are busy with their work. And mm-hmm. like, I don't want to lose what they're interested in and what, and just like the daily stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just saving conversations up for big things. Cause I just think, well, we talked about this, Marie, like, you mm-hmm. know, someone through their daily life, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I go a week or more without talking and I feel like I've lost a lot of just who they, you know, sure. Who they mm-hmm. are. Yeah. No, that's, right. that's really true. Yeah. Do you have a family group chat, Mindy? We do. And notoriously, there are one, sometimes two people that never read oh. The, the, oh. the text. Oh, <laughs> and they know it. And they and we all tease them about it. And um, somebody picked up that person's phone the other day and said, you have 47 unread messages on the family group chat. <laughs> he ignores it. Okay. (laughs) Does he want to be taken off? (laughs) So so that person, we have to text individually Mm, to have an individual relationship. Like that's just how he interacts. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Marie? Yeah, we also have a family group chat. And I notice that um, my boys tend to jump in if we start discussing politics sports, anything embarrassing that someone might have done. Like, they're not just going to comment on, oh, mom sent a Facebook memory from 10 years ago. Now, all the girls no. might like it or heart it, but the boys aren't even going to say one word about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, at least they do participate. But it's so funny because I have one son. This was a couple of years ago, but he was hardly ever. I didn't even know if he read the family group chat. And mm-hmm. one day on the family group chat, I just put... Hey, I found someone's AirPods. Whose are they? And immediately he texted and said, those are mine. I left them at your house. I want to get them next time. <gasps> and I thought, so oh, he, d- he does read the family group chat. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was the oh, first funny. one to respond. So <laughs> sometimes they're reading, but they're not responding. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. 
trying to stay in the shadows. Tell them that you found a hundred dollar bill and I know. see who says, "Oh, that might be mine." <laughs> I know. I was gonna say I have put a bribe out there before. I'm like, <laughs> if you respond, you will get this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've seen this idea before, and. I would like to try it, but I never have. And this could be with anyone. This could be with your spouse. It could be with a friend. You know, you get those entertainment books or those city pass books that have like buy one, get one free things to do in your area. And you just start picking them. You know, you go to the Country Mm -hmm. Music Hall of Fame that you haven't been to before. You go ice skating. You go, you know, to the different things that you wouldn't normally do because you're kind of using this as your guide to new things. Have you guys ever Mm -hmm. done that? No. Well, I mean, we've used those coupons before, but not like as a tool to get together. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming you split the cost. Well, if it's in your family, you're probably, and it's your kid, you're probably paid for all of it. But if it was your friend, you could split the cost. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I'll say, yeah, our dynamics have changed in a small town for sure. Okay. Um, We don't have a lot to go do. Okay. Okay. (laughs) There's no new restaurants opening. Uh huh. <laughs> so, so really, um, it's being creative, you know, in um, the activities that we mm-hmm. choose to do. Okay. So, there's that. So you're not going to be going through the city pass for for Lagrange. There's not a city. <laughs> <laughs> The town pass. <laughs> Nobody sells those books here. No, okay. okay. Like, no, like there's no Lagrange City Pass book. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Gosh, I haven't had one of those books in years. But believe it or not, you don't have to wait for anyone to sell them. You can actually buy them online mm-hmm. if you live in a city that 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 does. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, what about like when you think about this fall? Are there any connection points that you're wanting to try? Okay, this is not a novel idea, what I'm about to say. And let me reference the article before I answer, because um, she said, now make it things that you want to do, not things that you think you should do. Oh, so like, like mm-hmm. it, okay, so that actually struck a chord with me. And her example really struck a chord with me because it was like, if you think you should cook dinner at home every night, but you don't want to, you're not going to really do it. So she said, it needs to be, it needs to work. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, ironically enough, having dinner at home together was one of my connection points that I, I want to do. Now I know I'm not going to want to cook. So I think that's where (laughs) um, realistically, I need to just have a plan every day Mm -hmm. for whoever is home Mm -hmm. and have that connection point because we we are back in school in my house. I have two high schoolers, so we have mm-hmm. that routine set. Mm-hmm. So now they could work at night. Um, and so I never know who's going to be at home, if Bryce is going to have a meeting. But I need to have a plan mm-hmm. that we can try to at least have dinner, something yeah. happening for dinner together. Yeah, you have to be realistic about what you want to do versus mm-hmm. what you think you should do. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I don't know where this fits into our questions, but I have mentioned before that I like pickleball. And the reason I wanted to learn to play pickleball was because I thought that it would be a bonding experience for my husband and I in our empty nest. So like when my kids all went off to college last year, I thought, well, we will learn to play pickleball. And it started out okay. You know, I mean, it started out okay. But once we graduated from playing with just the two of us to like, going to open plays where you play with random people and you pay one price and then like over the course of three hours, you're paired with a lot of different people. Or even once we joined like the rec center and you go down and you might play with anybody available, I quickly learned that my husband actually doesn't really like to play pickleball with me. He would not say (gasps) that. Did he dump you, Marie? (laughs) What? (laughs) But I've learned this about a lot of couples. You think it's going to be a bonding experience between men and women. And actually, they call that line down the middle of the divorce line. And there are a lot of memes and funny reels about it on Instagram because it just works out that unless you're a phenomenal female player, chances are the male is just going to be better at it. More competitive, going to catch on quicker, going to hit the ball harder, and they want to play at that level. 
And so it quickly graduated from, well, this is just a fun way for us to connect with other couples to like, oh, you didn't get that ball? Oh. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it just, and, and I'm not criticizing Steve because I promise you this is a phenomenon that many married mm-hmm. people would speak to. But I guess this mm-hmm. was like one of those things where like you think is going to be a connection point between the spouses. And now we actually play pickleball mostly separately and we kind of fight a little bit in the morning, like not fight, but I'm like, oh, well, someone has to walk Clara and then I'm not going to be able to get down there to play pickleball and all the spots are going to be taken up and you already got to play this time. And so then he's like, fine, I'll walk Clara. But you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like we have to like take turns and plan out who's going to be able to get more pickleball time. Oh, so, that's, that's actually so funny. What I thought was going to connect us, <laughs> we've connected over laughter at other people on Instagram making fun of uh-huh. this phenomenon, but uh-huh. it really is true. <laughs> right. Yeah. It makes me think of uh, on Everybody Loves Raymond when Deborah decided to play golf with Raymond. Oh, this would happen <laughs> with thought, golf totally. Yeah, because he plays too much <laughs> golf, so it would be better if I just came with you. Yes. Not so good. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> well, I do love, I know later on, we're going to talk about expectations um, mm-hmm. that we have. And and that was what I was going to say is now that you and Steve know that the expectation has completely changed, you can now just enjoy it separately, mm-hmm. you know, Yeah. because you're not expecting this to be like a couple's, this is what we do together. And you're like, it didn't turn out to be that way. So we're going to let it go and we're going to just enjoy it. <laughs> You know, you might in your mind say, hey, let's start this thing that I think we're going to connect over mm. and there might be something that doesn't work out. I mean, have you guys had things where like, hey, I thought this would be a great idea for our family to do and it just flopped? Well, hiking was kind of always that way because I it? love hiking and only, mm-hmm. well, my son David loves hiking, but Andrew doesn't and da- and John doesn't, Okay, you know. He likes to walk on a flat, even surface. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to hike in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, you know, we started several hikes together and somebody turns around and I finish by myself. Oh, or, you know, <laughs> mm. <laughs> or David and I go up and everybody else waits at the bottom, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can so see I've that. just learned I'm just not going to ask people okay. who don't like to hike to hike, you know, I right. Mean, I get that. Right. And that's true. Like, I'm not going to ask one of my daughters, or really two of my daughters, to play a competitive card game because I already know that there's going to be disappointment on their part and my part because I'm not going to think it's fun unless we're playing to win. And they're going to be like, wise mom, want to win. And it's just not mm. going to, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I just want to have fun. And I won't play competitive games with the people in my house that are competitive (laughs) because I'm like, we're just here to like, we're bonding. We're having fun together. Like we're talking over the, no, like they're strategizing (laughs) and I'm annoying them. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I've learned and women that have been married for a while know this already, but I don't shop thinking that I'm going to find anything for myself if I'm with any male in my family. It doesn't Mm -mm. matter Mm -mm. if a male is with me shopping, it's for them. Mm -hmm. And I will go with Abby or by Mm -hmm. myself later. Yes. So yeah, those expectations are definitely, that doesn't happen. (laughs) No, no. I went suit shopping with Isaac last week. I don't even think I noticed that there was anything else in the world other than suits to look at, because Mm -mm. if I would have turned my eye in any other direction than the exact goal we were there for, that that doesn't go well when you're shopping with no. your son. It's like, no, we came to get this. Like, no, we cannot. We are on a right. mission. That's how men You shop. don't deviate. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't deviate from the plan, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. There could have been sales. There could have been cute things. I never saw any of it. <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about friendships because we've talked about family and, and we kind of know our family and we kind of know like, who in the family is going to be willing to do what and all that. But um, what are some typical ways that you connect with friends? And maybe some of that has gotten a little stale over the years. And maybe we have some ideas in that area. Well, for me, probably the easiest way is to walk or hike. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't 
don't know. I don't know that that can get stale. I like the fact that it's a routine and it's a set thing, you know. So, mm-hmm. Marie, we've got to get back on our weekly walk. I know. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, um yeah, because that's that's always kind of fresh because the conversation is always changing and, mm-hmm. you know, your life season's always changing. So I like that. I like to hike um, here in this neighborhood. Porch visits are kind of a new thing. Mm. Um, oh. And just, you know, I'm kind of starting to meet new people and mm-hmm. and there's just different things to do here. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'll say walking never gets old. I have certain friends that I like to walk with. Um, Also gym classes. I see certain friends at at the gym. Most of us still have kids in school. So even some some of my friends, like one of my friends, my friend Beth was back today because school's in session. I hadn't Mm -hmm. seen her most of the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, that doesn't get old. Mm -hmm. Uh, The gym Mm -hmm. classes, meeting friends there or meeting friends for a walk. I'm actually going to make a more concerted effort to do coffee and lunch Mm. and possibly even open myself back up for dinner. Mm -hmm. There was a season in life when the kids were little. I loved going out with friends every once in a while at night Mm -hmm. and it meant the world to me. And that that's what fit in my schedule. I had to wait for Bryce to get home to be able to, to do that. But I haven't done that in a really long time. And I'm thinking that I could open myself up to doing that. I have some friends that work that I don't get to see during the day. Mm -hmm. And so I think it'd be okay every once in a while to step out and kind of have my own, you know, thing with a friend. Mm -hmm. And so that's something is just maybe some meals here and there, Mm -hmm. um, even while I still have people at home. Yeah. 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 I was... Definitely thinking about walks and um, dinners out. So here's just something I'll brainstorm with you guys and listeners might be interested in that. So I've had a book club for, I don't know, I feel like since 2016. But I've noticed that this year it's sort of gone off the rails and kind of fallen apart. And I was wondering, is it because it's gotten stale? Is it because um, it's like leftover disconnection from 2020? Is it because the format has changed? Um, Maybe people have outgrown the need for a book club. And it had kind of used to be something where each person kind of took a month and, you know, you went to their house and you had a meal and, and stuff like that. And then 2020, you know, people got nervous about getting together. So then it ended up on a lot of people's porches and then people only wanted to have appetizers sometimes or no food. So that part kind of fell off. And then when, when we could get together again, I tried to bring back meals, but it was pretty much just me making the meals. And that, at first was okay once a month, but then after a while, I was like, I kind of run out of meal ideas. And I don't know, then the past mm-hmm. few months, I, I've gotten busy on those nights. And it's like, I didn't even send out a text this month to meet. And it's like, I'm falling off. And I guess I'm just wondering, like, I still want the, that point of connection, but yet I'm not even putting in the work that that's required. And I, I think this might be relatable to, mm. to listeners that, you know, it's like you want connection, but then you don't even want to do what's required for connection sometimes. And so I'm wondering, like, mm. how do you decide, like, has something kind of run its course? Is there a refresh right. of something? I know that this has happened before, like, even like, maybe you've had like a supper club for a certain amount of time and then people get busy and you don't meet for a couple months and then all of a sudden you don't have a supper club or I guess I'm just wondering like what are you guys thoughts on stuff like that that happens because it's disappointing Mm -hmm. I mean do you think and I'm just brainstorming here that I know I like for people to be as excited about something as I am Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. maybe if you feel like you're doing you're pulling a lot of the weight it's just I don't know that get, it becomes more work and effort than it is just pure fun. Mm. Do you think that has anything to do with it? You know, like initially everybody was kind of on the same page and maybe mm-hmm. now, you know, people in that six years, their lives have changed. Maybe mm-hmm. they don't have the, as much time for it and they're just still committed because they're loyal and want to mm-hmm. keep doing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like maybe mm-hmm. it's time to start it over, you know, start from scratch and I don't know. Yeah. Give give people the freedom to like opt out and then. Yeah. Know. Yeah. 
I also yeah. still feel like you're in a in a season like you're you used to have kids home um, that haven't gone back to school yet. Mm-hmm. And last year was your first empty nest year. Mm-hmm. This will be your second. And I don't know about you guys, but any major transition that first year is a wash. Like mm. when you move the first mm-hmm. year is, you know, getting settled and learning new routines and things like that. And then I feel like the second year you more start to make forward movement, momentum, you start to thrive where mm-hmm. you have had that major change. I don't know. I, I feel like you're going to see a huge change in your own life and you're still not there yet because the kids mm-hmm. haven't gone back to school yet. But mm-hmm. when you're back into mm-hmm. that empty nest mindset, mm-hmm. who knows what will happen in your life, Marie? I just mm-hmm. feel like there's so much possibility and you mm-hmm. know, it won't be as new this yeah. time. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So I don't really have any answers for that, but just that I'm wondering, does it fall under the gotten stale category Mm. under the, oh, am I just not willing to put in the work category? Maybe it's just happens to be a busy summer. You know, I don't know. But, Mm -hmm. but I think that this happens, like we might start points of connection. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to continue on. Yeah. They can fizzle out. Yeah. 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 And, you know, that served a great purpose for when at the time, 20, you know, during Mm -hmm. that time when Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe a lot of people signed up that wouldn't have Mm -hmm. normally, you know, because Mm -hmm. they needed that extra connection and now they don't need it as much or, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, you can see how you feel about it then because you might be a completely different person. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 And this this is kind of unrelated, but I know for me, like when in, in our life right now, like when I am most needing connection is often when I least feel like reaching out, mm. you know, like, mm-hmm. gosh, you'd like to be doing something, but you just don't have the energy to emotional energy to even make a phone call or reach out. And mm. um, so I think that can contribute to like people. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I can give the appearance of being uninterested or <laughs> mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. disconnected, but, um, it's just where I am. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 Well, is there anything that you guys have thought about that you, and we kind of talked about that, but something specific maybe that you're going to try to do to foster deeper relationships or connections among friends? I like my family, we have been here two years now, mm-hmm. you know, we're living or third year. And, um, we're still looking for like, who are like good, good friends are going to be like, Mm -hmm. if I'm perfectly honest Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. vulnerable really, because, Mm -hmm. but I have been praying, you know, um, some, some of my kids have really found that connection. Some haven't Bryce and I are like, we've met a lot of people. We have a lot of connections, a lot of friends. We're at that point where, um, we're like, okay, well, who should we really be intentional with? And I'm praying about that. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes the people that you want to go deeper with, maybe they don't have room for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's also being aware. I'm paying attention to who's reaching out to me Mm -hmm. also, Mm -hmm. you know, who seems open to me, like who has space in their life. And that I, you know, like you're, you're trying to make, it's almost like you're dating. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're like, Mm -hmm. are you interested? I'm interested. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and do you have space and, you know, like, what does that look like? And so, um, I'm just being completely honest about that, that that's that those are conversations that we're having around my house this year. Right now. Yeah. You guys are always so intentional, Mindy. Like you really think. (laughs) <laughs> you don't just you're very do um, you know I mean you really it's good to give that some thought mm-hmm. yeah yeah all right well let's transition a little bit and talk about maybe some of the the hard parts of reconnecting and you know we love our families we love our families let's just say that right out front but we can also be annoyed by each other and family members can annoy you in ways that like a friend wouldn't. Like maybe you give your mm-hmm. friend a pass on something, but if your family member does it, you jump all over them. So, you know, we can easily get annoyed with each other. And this article also addresses maybe how to establish connection and reset the relationship with people that we've been annoyed or disillusioned with. And 
What are some ways that we can do that? Well, I think it's probably helpful to kind of check your expectations because you you might say oh, I just don't I don't have any expectations, but we I think that's not true. Like we mm-hmm. all have expectations and things come crashing down. I think it's because our expectation it shows us how far our expectations are from reality. Like mm-hmm. the further they are from reality, the more likely things mm-hmm. are going to break. You know. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about types of expectations, like some are just unknown to us. Like, you know, if somebody said, I think chocolate tastes like dirt, you know, we'd be like, I I just assumed everybody in the world appreciated chocolate, you know, Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just kind of a silly one. But, you know, if you said, you know, a real friend does this, fill in the blank, Mm -hmm. like a real friend calls you on your birthday. Mm. But your friend waited a week and took you out to lunch. You know, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is that is that mm-hmm. a bad thing or is that just an expectation you had that that other person didn't have? You know, so mm-hmm. you have to kind of think about mm-hmm. that. And then this is the one that gets me. And I wanted to hear what mm-hmm. you guys think is an unshared expectation. Mm. And I just have a lot of trouble sharing what I expect or not expect what I would like from people. Mm -hmm. because I feel like it feels a little artificial then if they're going to, you know, like I want people to want to do whatever, you know, like if I was saying, I wish you, I wish you talked with me more, or I wish you shared more with me. I wish we were closer. I don't want it to feel like an obligatory thing. Does that make sense? That's hard, Julie, because I I feel like this is something that we do even with spouses, you know, like Mm -hmm. you're mad because Mm -hmm. your husband didn't do something romantic enough on your anniversary, but you don't want to say it because you want him to think of it on his own. And what does that (laughs) say that he didn't think of it, even though Mm -hmm. it was something that you had planned in your mind, wanted, and how could he possibly even know that that was your plan? I mean, so I I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. I would be flattered if somebody said, I wish you would talk with me more and share with me more. I mean, maybe I'm just weird, but I would be like, (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, let me tell (laughs) you. Yeah. I don't know, because that that can also cause a rift where maybe there wasn't one. Like Mm -hmm. if you say, I Mm -hmm. wish Mm -hmm. we, you know, even that feels like, oh, I did something wrong. You know, like the, the person hearing that is like already, it can feel like they're going on the defense, but it's really hard with I'll say close friends, but I find it to be harder with my family because I really do love them the most. I care about my relationships with them the most and they annoy me the most because mm-hmm. you, those are the interactions that are happening more often. I think that when you have an unmet expectation personally, a lot of times it's easier to like stuff that or try to ignore it and just think it's going to go away, but it's not. It will always come back. And I, there's, you almost have to spend time with it to try to recognize it, to try to figure out you know, what is this unrest that I feel with this person? I don't like it. I don't want it con- to continue. I long for a better relationship. So in those instances, cause that happens, like it happens often. Um, so I start with prayer because I feel just like, I, I can't even recognize, you know, and then I think, well, I feel like I've tried everything, you know, I want to make this relationship better and I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, trying to recognize it first is really difficult. And then trying to, to get a perspective, is this like a deal breaker? Is this like, is there an action or, or words that shouldn't be happening? You know, is there something that needs to be fixed or is it that I'm not feeling their love because I'm not looking for it in the way that they're giving, Mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm not open to what, what they have. But I think that I, the Lord always takes me back to first Corinthians 13. Love keeps no record of wrongs. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that always humbles me to the point where I think, well, I know that my actions and words can be hurtful and can separate my close relationships. And so just being aware, spending time with the Lord, but just having him try to reveal not only them and what I'm thinking of them, but me and what I'm projecting and and what I'm thinking, because I'm always convicted when I'm mad at somebody else, always. Mm-hmm. Well, if I have an unmet 
expectation, the Lord always brings it back home, you know, <laughs> and I feel convicted about a behavior or word or, or, or whatever's happening. But I mean, you hope to be able to have a conversation that's loving and supportive and encouraging. Also, if it's just an annoying habit, you know, from your husband, I think it's just getting a right perspective. Okay. Yeah. You know, he does this annoying habit all the time. And yes, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be annoyed at how he is making something up messy in the bathroom, you know, like I'm going to always be annoyed at that. But like, I'm going to think about how he loves me doing this. I'm going to think about how he protects me. I'm going to think about how he adores me. And I'm going to let that go. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a balance between letting some expectations go and working through them privately. And then I feel like if it's something that keeps coming up between you and a friend or between you and a family member, it's maybe just if you had a little bit of a conversation about it, then you could hear their perspective and they could hear your perspective and it wouldn't Mm -hmm. always turn into this thing in your mind. So I I think Mm. it's just like a, a take it instant by instant, but sometimes having a conversation about how you have these expectations, they're not being met might avoid the next 30 years of resentment because, Oh, well we address that or not. It's just one of those things that, that you, like you said, Mindy, I really do think you need to pray about it. But then also sometimes yeah. just saying, I know sometimes I've set expectations that I had, and then I found out that they had expectations of me that I wasn't meeting either. And then we both felt like, mm-hmm. oh, well, let's work on each doing mm-hmm. our part then, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, that's a good point. It's just, yeah, it's hard. It is hard. Like, this is not easy stuff where we've, <laughs> where this conversation has gone. Um, it's not easy. And it might be easier for you to articulate expectations with some people and not with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with your family, they know you better than anyone else. So I think that they might jump to conclusions quicker, like hearing you differently than Mm. someone that knows you less, you know? So the, the knowing someone is a great thing. It's a great comfort to have somebody, you know, that that you know so well, but it's kind of a double-edged sword, double-edged it sword too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. is yeah. because maybe you're ready to forgive and move on, but for the last 10 years, you've acted one way. Well, how are they supposed to know? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And in the same regard, they need to have the opportunity to change and grow and mature too. So how do you have fresh eyes with somebody that you've known for however mm-hmm. long? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you do a family reset. You do a relationship (laughs) reset, you make a resolution, you fail, you get back on the horse, (sighs) you try again. Like, Mm -hmm. none of these things Mm -hmm. are one and done. Like, oh, I made this resolution and then my relationship was better forever. Like, relationships are a constant progress. Yeah. Yeah. Trial and error. Yeah. Yeah, they are. For sure. Well, listeners, we don't know if we've solved any of your problems today, but we did enjoy (laughs) the idea of a family reset or a family refresh. We want to encourage people to just take a look at their friendships and their family relationships and think about how can we connect deeper, especially as we're transitioning into a new time of year. People might be starting, you know, new schools. They might be going into the empty nest and they want to reconnect with their husband. They might just be experiencing different things for the first time. And so we encourage you to maybe just be like Mindy and be intentional and evaluate. (laughs) (laughs) Those are brave words, Marie. (laughs) Be like Mindy. Yes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Gosh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast, or you can email us at Midlife Matters Podcast at gmail.com. But before we go, we want to do I'm a fan. All right, Julie, what are you a fan of this week? All right, this week, I'm a fan of Green Chef. And Mm. it's a food meal service, you know, where you get um, food shipped to your front door. And I got it from a neighbor. She uses it. We were talking about how hard it is to cook you know, when you just have two people and that I don't cook much anymore. And so she said, Hey, I've got, we use this uh, green chef. So I have all these coupons. And so she basically had a whole week's worth of meals for free. It was like over a hundred dollars. She just oh, gave it to me. Goodness, and um, so we had four meals delivered for two people. Yeah. And actually it feeds three. Great. Uh, we just don't have any leftovers. 
or sometimes like I'll have to cook my own extra rice or something like that. But for the, mm-hmm. as far as the meat and everything goes, it's been fine. But I have tried a food service before. I think I did Blue Apron once. Is, is that is that a yeah, that's that one. I think one? So. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this one is really, really good. Um, you get to choose different lifestyle preferences. Like I chose Mediterranean. They have quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, plant based, gluten free. Wow. Um, but like some of the meals I would never dream of cooking. And all of it's just right there in the right amounts. Mm. Like you're still cooking. So if you enjoy cooking, you are still cooking and shopping and all, but you just don't have to go buy. 10 spices that you're never going to use again, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like we had pork tenderloin with balsamic fig preserve on it, you know, like I would, yeah, it was delicious. And, um, last night we had some kind of chicken, you know, like with all these vegetables and spices that I just would never buy. And, um, a lot of the stuff I thought, Oh, I don't know if I'm going to like that, but the flavors, all the meals, because I guess maybe because they're Mediterranean, have been plated where you, they even show you how to plate the meal. Mm. And it's usually layered like rice or some kind of base with the meat and the veggies and a sauce. So you're, you're actually getting like all of it in one bite, which is, I love nice. that. Wow. Yeah. Instead of like a section of green beans to eat, all the veggies sure. are just mixed in. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I just did it as a trial thinking, you know, it's free, I'll do it, but I I am going to um, continue to use it. Probably just get two meals a week so I can still do some of our own favorites, uh, you know. That's interesting, but yeah. They, they have been delicious. Oh, good. Wow. So I, haven't, I haven't heard of Green Chef. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that sounds great. Yeah. All right, Mindy, what are you a fan of? This is going to sound silly, but um, coming from a midlife woman, but I'm a fan of Snapchat oh. and I'm not a fan of Snapchat for like young kids. All right. You okay. see a lot of, you know, bad stuff that, that people can get into. Well, I'm not raising my daughter anymore. I'm done. Okay. Right. She's, yeah, <laughs> she's 23, <laughs> but she and I, we were, we've been talking about family connections and, you know, certain people you can connect with in different modes. Mm -hmm. And so one way that Abby and I are able to stay connected and it's little silly snippets, but it's also small little information about things happening in our day at that time. So we Snapchat each other. Mm. She's the only person I snapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And so sometimes the boys will snap me, but um, they mainly don't. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's fun. Like it's lighthearted. It's fun. And Abby's the only one that really kind of keeps up with me. And she's the only one I really care about on there. And now if my boys are listening, okay, if you snap me, I I care about you too. (laughs) All right. Don't hear the wrong thing, but Abby and I keep up with each other. And so we, we're not always able to talk on the phone. We're not always texting, but Mm -hmm. sometimes we just snap each other. So that's nice. Yeah, and you got the lingo down. You snap each other. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm with it. Yeah. (laughs) I know. I think that's great because this article also talked about joining the people that you want to connect with in their interests. And that's joining Abby in something that she's familiar with. You're learning Mm -hmm. something new and you're joining right in. Right. So I love that. Right, right. Yeah. Lots of fun filters. <laughs> I, I can see you love me that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm a fan of the Barbie movie, which I feel like is making the rounds. And I honestly, I know it has some controversy and I didn't even read about it, which is not like me. I didn't even read about it. I just knew from headlines that it had controversy. But mm-hmm. um, my oldest daughter wanted to see it and my two college girls were available that day. All three could go with me at the same time. I'm like, we're going. What? So we yeah. went and I don't know what the controversy is really. So hear me if I'm saying something you're like, that's not right. But from someone just watching it, I just thought it was cute and funny. It was funny to think about how we played with Barbies and then they kind of act that way in the movie. Like there's this Barbie oh. that everybody played to death with, cut her hair, drew on yeah, her face that. and they call her <laughs> weird Barbie. And like everybody had a Barbie that was like, the one that was played with too much. And then mm-hmm. I loved the Barbies with like the really long hair. And oh, yeah. There were so, it was just funny. It was, I don't know. I thought it was cute. And I don't know. I think if you just look at it for what it is, which is mm-hmm. kind of incorporating the doll world with the real world, I just thought it was 
I thought it was a cute movie. We had fun going to see it. So if you're thinking of going to see the Barbie movie and you're like kind of on the fence, I think you'll be fine. (laughs) That's my take on it. I loved how they made a big deal about their feet being on their toes, you know, because that's what you think of when you think of your Barbie's feet. (laughs) Yes. 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 There were all these things about their Barbie dream houses. And oh, even when Ken, when Ken gets his dream house, it's called our amazing Casa Dojo something else. And um, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so many things like um, Ken is wearing a sweatshirt. It says at the end, I'm Ken enough. And Lauren goes, Uh I bet that's on the internet. She looked it up. It's all sold out on Etsy. Like people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just funny. It's a, it's a fun little pop culture thing right now. It was, it's very nostalgic. Yeah. Something to do on a summer afternoon if you're thinking about it. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mindy, I can see you enjoyed it. (laughs) Man, Barbies were my life. I cannot wait to see it. I'm waiting to go with Abby because it's more about, you know, yeah, having friends or daughters mm-hmm. or whatever, and just keeping it light and keeping it fun and yeah, um, and so but yeah, Barbies were my whole world when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's funny. Mine too. The fashion, the hair, the whole bit. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I enjoyed talking with you guys today. Hope you have a great week. And listeners, come and find us next week. We'll be here. Sounds great. This was fun. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.